Hey, hello everyone, it's Don Bain, the Gadget Professor, coming to you live and in color from our Scottsdale, Arizona studio. How's everybody doing? It's starting to heat up here in Arizona, but that's a good thing. It's uh, 94 degrees today, but I like it. I like it. It's a dry heat. Today, we are going to take a look at an incredible device. As everyone knows, I do a, a lot of live interviews all over the country, and uh, my show's been going for, I think, almost seven years now, and it's heard in 172 countries around the world. Uh, the Gadget Professor show just took off like a shotgun. Uh, don't ask me why, but it did. So people always say, you know, what equipment do you use? How do you, how do you get the high-quality video? Well, the truth of the matter is uh, I've just uh, recently started using this uh, LiveView Solo device, and it's, it's, it's quite a unique device. Uh, LiveView is pretty much, in my opinion, is the uh, innovators and the inventors of this bonding technology. So this device is a portal device that will allow you to do high-quality HD streaming pretty much on the fly, wherever you want to go. So if I'm at CES or NAB, uh, I actually take this device, and I'll show you. It comes with a nice little pack, so the clip is right here. It clips right on my belt, and uh, it comes with the charging device. Everybody's familiar with these power packs. In any event, this will give you a two-hour charge, and away you go. So you can connect any type of camera, high-quality camera. It can be your GoPro. It can be your DSLR. It could be your movie camera, and you just have to have an HDMI output which is already attached to this, and we'll get into that in a minute or two. Or you can go SDI if you want to go the pro way, and you're totally portable for two hours, and this will stream directly to Facebook if that's what you want to do with the click of a button. So it's quite a unique device, no question about it. They are known for their bonding technology, and essentially what that means is they're going to take the signal, and by the way, this connects up in several different ways. You can connect this to the Internet, your hardwire Ethernet cable right to this device. This will also work on Wi-Fi, but really where the technology is and the secret of this device is this will take two, two cards from any carrier that you want, AT&T, Verizon, uh, Mobile One. I don't care who your carrier is, but you get these portable cards, these USB uh, cards, and what you're going to do is you're going to put one on one side, and you're going to put one on the other side, and kind of that's what it looks like. Don't worry about how these things hang because they're going to go in this nice case. But uh, I typically use two different carriers. I'll use Verizon and AT&T. You can adjust to what you want, and yes, you can use two of the same cards. But the beauty of what LiveView does is they'll take a combination of cards, if you will, of these USB cards, and they will create this bonding technology and they will know automatically and mathematically they will figure out how to get you the absolute best signal. It's in a combination of how these cards are actually picking up the signal and the antenna technology that's built into this. So what's going to happen is from this device your camera will be attached to it you will actually be able to stream live directly to Facebook or for that matter any major CDN that's out there so you can pretty much go to any CDN that you want instantaneously. And in a second or two, I'll show you what that Live View interface looks like on the computer. And also, I'm going to tell you that uh, in addition to the crazy features that this has, uh, it actually has a screen here where you can actually monitor the video signal. So it really is an all built-in one portable box and very affordable. As a matter of fact, I think this runs about 1800 bucks. You are not going to find a higher quality, more reliable device than this Live View Solo. Let's take a look at how we turn this device on. It's actually pretty simple. You can see here is screen and uh, this is actually loading right now. I just turned it on and you turn it on right here. It's real simple. You push the button and it turns on. This device here is a little uh, switch, if you will. It's a rocker switch. And what this is going to do is allow you to click through the various menus. When you find what it is that you're looking for, you're going to push that in. And it works very simple, very easy, and uh, it's just a, a no-brainer, quite frankly. Let's take a look at how you get the camera inputs connected to the device. On this side, you'll see that we have a large protrusion here. What is that? That is for your SDI camera. So if you're using a professional camera, you're going to use this SDI jack. Not to say that you can't use an HDMI camera, which I think most people would probably have. And uh, that input is right here. So you can connect either the HDMI output from your device, your camera, or you can use the SDI. They are both located here. This is a real handy feature here. This is where you're going to put your headset, or if you want to use earbuds, go right ahead. That's a jack dedicated to hearing your output of your audio 
when you are recording. Uh, I get a lot of questions as to what this micro uh, SD card is, and the truth of the matter is at this point in time, this is not uh, connected, so uh, don't worry about it because uh, it's not up yet, but I think that's coming very soon. Let's flip the device around to the other side and uh, see what we have there, but before we do, uh, I need to call your attention to this very important feature here. This is where you're going to connect whatever carrier's card you're using. You're going to connect that very easily into there and now you have one side we have another side to go we are actually have your carrier's card hooked into the usb side let's turn this around right here and uh, this is the only other side that we need to talk about uh, you're going to hook your dc power to charge the device up and uh, it comes with its own uh, charger of course and uh, you'll plug that right in there and charge the device up make sure it's charged before you hit the road you're going to get about two hours and then of course right here you have the other card that's going to go in, so we'll plug that there like so. And now we have uh, two cards, if you will. And uh, the other thing is, if you really want, I'll plug, unplug this for a second. If you really want to use your hardwire Ethernet cable, you would use this connector right here, and uh, this will actually take a hardwire. So again, you have three ways of connecting uh, to the internet here. You have the hardwire Ethernet cable. Uh, if you go on the front of the device, uh, you'll be able to configure this via the menu to your Wi-Fi. And of course, last but not least, uh, you're going to have your two uh, carrier cards right here that will allow you to connect to the internet. So there's three different ways, uh, the cards, Ethernet cable, or Wi-Fi. Uh, not much missing, to be honest with you, not much missing at all. So let's take a look at what this puppy looks like all put together. Here is the device put in the case. Obviously, you're going to clip this to your belt or your strap pack, whatever you want, and uh, that will take care of that. The unit is turned on. There's your screen. And this is a nice shot here, if you will, of the, uh, the two cards that we're using. They fit very nicely in these little pockets here with elastics on them. And uh, obviously, the uh, devices are connected. So this is it. This is the total package uh, that will get you streaming uh, for two hours. Uh, all portable and highly, highly, highly reliable. So let's zero in on the applications for this wonderful LiveView Solo device. As I mentioned early on, you can use it for any type of sporting event because it's totally portable. You can use it for interviews. You can use it for a house of warships. It's great for that. So what I use this for is a variety of different applications, but as you know, I do professional broadcasting. So I do a lot of off-site or portable location types of events. So if I'm doing a man on the street or a man at CES or a man at NAB, I need someone to have a camera and the portability of streaming, which this will do. What happens in my situation is I have a cameraman with this uh, pack and the signal of this is actually sent back to my TriCaster or my LiveView, any type of switching device, this actually becomes another signal. And that's very important because it's gonna give you high quality HD professional broadcast stream which comes in as another channel another camera on any type of uh, professional streaming device any type of professional switcher that I'm using and that's one of the things I love about this alright so here's where the pedal hits the metal what's the special sauce that's going on in this live view solo device and I'll tell you exactly what it is it's called reliable transport live view solo incorporates what's called LRTTM what's that mean it's live view reliable transport this is a unique transmission protocol that they pretty much engineered and invented and what that does is it guarantees you consistent high quality live video stream over the internet and that's what they're known for and that's really the special sauce behind this device and no one else has that so by using live view solo you're taking advantage of their high quality engineering and their technology which is going to take all these packets make sure that the signal is strong make sure that the signal has no lag whatsoever and it's going to transmit it to the live view what I'll call relay station and boom it's going to go out from there so that's why you want to go with this device quality and reliability what we're looking at right now is the actual dashboard the login screen for your live view account Obviously, when you sign up with LiveView, you're going to get your own account, your username, and password. So I've put that in, and this is where it brings me. This is my unit name. If I click on that, it's going to show me that I'm connected. And uh, right now, my provider is uh, Facebook. That's where I'm going to go. And uh, we'll just hit the back button here, and we'll take a further look. So uh, right now, the unit's connected. Uh, my provider, obviously, is Facebook. And really, all I have to do at this point in time is just click 
this device here to start the unit and I will be streaming instantaneously it's that simple if you do not want to go to Facebook uh, yes you can go pretty much wherever you want and this is the interface you can go to Facebook uh, Periscope and Twitter Switchboard Live Wowza you can go directly to YouTube if you want Ustream, Daycast, Limelight, uh, Akamai obviously there's a, a lot of choices here and uh, at the end of the day if you want to use RTMP uh, that's available too so you're going to click on that and then you can customize it to whatever CDN you want to use and that is a key feature right there the ability for this to use anybody's streaming service is huge and that's why I really like the LiveU products so the unit costs $14.99 that's it then you're going to spend 45 bucks a month for the solo cloud service which is phenomenal or if you want to save a couple bucks I would just do it by the year it's 450 bucks for the year great deal if you're lucky enough to live here in Arizona you can buy the unit from multimedia communications the information is right here below me and they are a great company if you have any questions about the solo or any live you product you can call multimedia communications and they will do their best to help you you know you can go to gosolo.tv and find a reseller in your area and I'll let you in on a tip if you ask for a demo of the solo unit you will get absolutely free three months of the LRT service well, that's going to wrap it up today, folks. I hope you enjoyed the review of the LiveU Solo. I love that unit. I will be using it at NAB in a couple of weeks. I am sure of that. And uh, thank you for tuning in. This is Don Bain, The Gadget Professor. Hey guys, it's Steve from the techbuzz.net and today I have an awesome, awesome video for you. And uh, I know you guys know that I'm not a big fan of unboxings, but this unboxing is something you're gonna wanna take a look at. Stay with us. Okay, well we got the box here from uh, the folks over at LiveU. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what's inside here. And it, like I said, you guys know I hate unboxings, but this is something that I think is important because I want you guys to see what you're getting with this set. Now this is a review unit, so it's not gonna come in the traditional LiveU box that, um, you would normally get from the folks at LiveView, and I'm gonna show you that here in a second. So this is the box that you would normally get if you purchase the LiveView Solo. And we're just gonna kinda of open this up just so you can kinda of get an idea. Um, very, It's not a very big box. You know, you, you, you can see the form factor of the LiveView Solo. You know, um, you get all your information, your power cords come inside here, and pretty much that's it, the LiveView Solo and and the power cords and it's and it's instructions ready to go online so um, that's the actual box now this box here is the reviewers box so this you know they kind of take a little bit of the workout but it makes it easier for me to kind of show you the whole unit and the size of the unit and as you can see here's the return label I gotta send that back um, but that's it. I mean, it's there's not a lot in here. I mean, this 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 device is is pretty radical. So let me just kind of go through some of the components here. Um, you have these USB cables, and you're thinking, well, why on earth would you have USB cables with this device? Well, what LiveView has done is they've given you these extensions, and I'll show you what they where they go here in a second. But they allow you to have the dongles attached to the pack to make it a little bit easier for you. Um, when carrying your your LTE and 4G modems um, on the system so they're not in in any kind of way to get disconnected or have any kind of issues with uh, the system so let's let's look at the star of the show this is the brand new live you go solo um, this is an HDMI only model this retails for about a thousand dollars uh, you see there's a USB port right there, there's a headphone jack, HDMI, let's flip to the other side. You have an Ethernet cable, you have USB, and then you have your power charging cable for the internal um, battery. On the front, 
you have a screen which will show you um, exactly what is being output to the internet. Um, there's a power button and a little jog dial here that you can see. Um, I'll zoom it in here so you can see a little bit better. Um, this here, you know, when you're carrying this, it's pretty awesome because it has just this simple belt clip here. It's just going to slide over your belt, and my cameraman loves it. He's, he, you know, he's he's from the original time when this thing was like a backpack size, 80 pounds, carrying this around CES back in 2011 and NAB. It, it just it was a it was a bear to carry around. So. Um, this device here, you just simply hold it to power up. Let's see if it has a charge. It's going to come up with the loading screen. This is how simple it is. Now, it's not going to find any modems, obviously, um, because there is nothing attached. And and the glare, you can see they have a protective film. I don't want to take it off because this is going to go back to live view. So there's no need to pull it off. But, you know, I can, I can kind of show you at least what the screen looks like. So you normally you would have your camera connected to the box and you would have your modems connected so that the live view solo can find them and uh that, you know that's pretty much it i'm going to show you the web interface here in a little bit when we get to the review section of it this is just kind of the, the unboxing part of it but the review section um i want to show you how it's how it's set up and um how easy it is right to to do this so i have my uh, my own personal unit that uh you know, I'm going to show and set up. So right now we just got a, you know, a black screen. It's loading still. Um, probably it's having a hard time because, well, there are no modems connected. So <laughs> it's uh, it's probably going to come up and it's going to say like there's no modems. But honestly, you boot it up and you just kind of let it go. I mean, there's different uh, menu options that are in there. You can actually set up your live stream right from this. Um, or you could do it from the web interface. I personally like to do it from the web interface, which is also mobile friendly. It just makes it easier. Um, so one of the questions that's going to come up with this is, since this is an unboxing slash review, um, what about modems? What do I do? What do I do for modems? Um, as you can see, the battery is almost dead. And let me let me zoom in so you can get a really clear non-glare picture of this because this is important. Um, this is the important screen. So there you can see it says no camera. Um, it would show the camera if it, um, if it was on. It also has the battery that is, um, you know, gonna die uh, <laughs> very shortly. But the live area, you would have your camera behind that and it also shows that it's offline. So you could press this button here and that will take you into more info and you can just jog it. Um, I'm probably not getting that very good here. Let's, let's pull that back into frame and you could kind of jog this up and down based upon what you want to do with it. And it shows you, you know, the, the names and IDs and things like that. And you can just kind of mope, mope around, mosey around in here, and then go back out. The power button will work as a, a back, if you will. So that's kind of i mean it's really simple interface and like i said i'll show you the the web interface so you guys can take a look at it um but you know it's probably one of the simpler live views that i've used in the past um and i'm not saying the old ones were hard to work it's just that live views made this so simplistic it, it, it's it's awesome so on the front of the pack i'm going to kind of show you Right in here is where you could stick your USB modem. So I have some modems here that I'm gonna kind of show you real quick with my unit. I'm gonna stick it down in here. So what I've done is I have slid, this is what I like to do. I have slid in my, my uh, modems, okay, in the front. And as we talked about earlier, you have these USB extensions. So you can plug them right in the side here and then they go directly into the top of the use. This way there's no pull on this, it's not gonna break. You're not gonna have any kind of problems with it where um, you know these cables are gonna get caught on anything. Meanwhile, then it just sits on your pouch uh, and, and you're good to go. I mean, so I've got a Verizon card here and an AT&T card here. So for those that are new to Live View and what it does, this, this unit here is gonna take both of these cellular connections and it's gonna bond it together to give me one complete uplink. So with that uplink, it's gonna give me 
the maximum bandwidth that I can get to do high definition video, 720p, 1080p, on location, you know, wherever I'm at. And the other cool part is if you have access to the wireless there, you can also bond these two to the wireless. So then you have basically three connections that you can work off of. Or, you know, if you're gonna do it in an event where you're gonna be hardwired, you can hook up the ethernet and then bond it as well to the cell signals, just for like a, a redundant internet um, setup. So that's why those rubber bands are, you know, I call them rubber bands, but the, the elastic straps are there. So, you know, they just lift these up here and you can slide your your card in there or any kind of cable for that matter. Let me um, let me power this off here. And to power it off, let me show you. Um, hopefully my finger's not in the way. Um, let's do it this way. Just press and hold and it'll say, hold to shut down. So you just keep holding it and then it starts to shut down. Once it starts shutting down, you just let it go. And um, we'll wait for it to shut down and it's uh, getting there. And once, once it shuts down, boom, it's off. You can put it back in your box or on your shelf or wherever you want. Also in the, in the package, you get this. This is very important. This is an HDMI cable. This is a mini HDMI to full-size HDMI. A lot of the cameras and camcorders today, including the one that I'm using right now, the, camera, uh, the Canon HF G40, has a mini HDMI port. So that would go into the camera, and then the full-size HDMI port goes into the Live View. Now, Live View does recommend that you use their cable. Their cable's rated and been tested to work. Not saying that other cables will not work. Um, it's just that that's what they recommend, and, and I tend to stick with what they recommend. Um, you also get the power brick. This power brick um, has a two-part power brick. The end of it has this cable, which goes into the Live View, and without undoing all this, this you this part here obviously if you've ever used the power brick I can kind of demonstrate this this kind of goes right into here and then you just plug this into the live view and then you take the plug right here and plug it in the wall and charge her up because we know this thing needs a charge so I mean that's pretty much it with the contents of the box I mean you, what what you saw right in here that that's it that's all you get um, and you saw the little packaging that they give you. So, I mean, this is it. This is this is your whole, this is your whole kit, if you will. I'll zoom out here. Um, this is this is the, uh, and I'll, I'm I'm kind of speechless in a sense because, again, I've been with LiveView for so long. I've been I've been using their products and working with them. It's just amazing that I remember getting a huge box. If you guys go back and look at my videos. A huge box, backpack style box with an 80 pound backpack and batteries that weighed 20 to 30 pounds. And we carried them suckers around CES and NAB. And now the size of my hand, it's smaller than my hand, the unit to give you high quality video on location. We're going to be using this at ATA in January at the Archery Trade Association. It's a trade show and um, I'm really excited, but I, I don't even hesitate the quality of live view I know I know it works so let's take you and show you now the web interface and show you just how easy that really is okay so before we go over to the web interface let me start this up I have the, this camera that I'm actually recording this review slash unboxing on is is actually going to be showing so you're gonna see a, like a loop you're gonna see what it's showing and then it's going to show it here on this little screen so before we go to the web interface we have to boot this up because it has to see everything that's going on so what i'm going to do is i'm going to boot this up then i'm going to go over and pull up the web interface because that's how they talk to each other it's how it sends the signal to the live view solo it, it, it it'll go once you go to the website um solo.liveview.tv it'll pull it up and you'll be able to see that the unit is there create your event and so forth and so on so i'm gonna i'm gonna pull that up here but in the meantime those um questions that are probably going to pop up is like how do you know what cellular carrier that you should use live view has a page on their website if you go on there that tells you the type of carriers depending on where you're located at either in the u.s or in another country um, and as you can see right there, 
um, it showed a picture of the camera. So make sure you check out LiveU.TV for any kind of information in regards to your um, cellular carrier. Like I said, I'm using AT&T and Verizon. That's what's prominent here where I'm at in Western Pennsylvania. Um, but, you know, it's going to vary based upon where you're at. And those data rates you are going to be paying for the bandwidth. So that's not covered under that $1,000 price tag for the LiveU Solar. That price tag is strictly for just the unit. Okay, so whatever these carriers charge for the data, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to foot the bill for that. So, um, as you can see, I had an event planned already. Uh, so you can see it's coming up here, Facebook. Um, okay, this was one that we were gonna do when we were processing a, a, a deer. So that's why it's gonna show you that. Uh, but you can also see in behind it, you can see the camera. I just moved it. See, it's the same camera. So it says ready. So now we're going to take you to the web interface and set this all up and then make sure it talks to it. So let's, let's take you to that right now. Okay, guys, uh, here we are at the Live View Solo um, webpage. So if you go to solo.liveview.tv and then here's the login. So I'm just going to click login. I've already got my credentials in there because I don't want you to see them. Um, <laughs> right here, you can kind of see. Uh, we're going to get rid of that. Now you can see right here is the processing of the deer, um, and it, you know this is the one that you guys saw over there on the live view unit. It shows my unit name, but if I refresh, I can make it, you know, I can make it see that, and um, you have all this information. Facebook sign in. It says the unit's connected, the uptime, um, and so we could basically just go live by hitting that. Uh, go live button on the live view which is the same as the power button um, you can edit the encoder just by clicking edit these are the one touch streaming uh, destinations that you can go to periscope switchboard live and, and uh, you guys know I use switchboard to go to multiple destinations um, twitch wowza and YouTube and periscope slash Twitter but then you can also do RTMP destinations that are out there as well so you can you can get all that information here so um, I wanted you guys to see that the unit connects to it. Um, like I said, this was one that I had set up previously. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of log into my Facebook, um, my Facebook page, and I'm going to click OK, and now it's going to go to Live View Solo. So what do we want to call this? Uh, let's just call this uh, Live View Review, and this is a live review of the live view solo and here's where you can choose your output up to 1280p 720 and um, which is which is more than sufficient you know a lot of people are like well I want to do 1080p well live view does have units that'll do 1080p and but the solo for most people like when I go out there I just 720p is most that that people can bring out so um, this is going to ask me what page that I wanted to go to. I have the Tech Buzz Network. Well, I'll leave it on my no boundaries because that's what I'm going to be using in the future. You could schedule it when you want it to go live by uploading an image. This is why I like to use the web interface. It's a lot faster, in, in my opinion, for me. Uh, but one touch streaming, if you just want to go live right then and there and you don't care about all this stuff, it's great. Um, but if I'm going to plan an event, I like to upload the image. I like to, you know, schedule schedule the time. So. Let's say Tuesday the fifth, and we're gonna go live at uh, at 12:30. Um, let's see here. Well, I guess we'll do one o'clock, um, just for the sake of argument. So one o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Scheduled live videos must be scheduled between 10 minutes and seven days. Okay, so uh, there's advanced settings in here where you can go in and override the resolution, bit rates, frame rates, all that good stuff. Then after you're done doing that. You just simply hit the submit button and you'll see the bar at the top of the screen going a couple times and you'll see it um, pop up so now if we go to Facebook you will see let me get rid of some of these emails here I got popping up here um, if you go to Facebook probably under my notifications here um, you're going to see it's going to say no boundaries scheduled to post because I know I got it up on my um, my other page. So let's see here. There might be a placeholder in here. 
Um, we'll go to the No Boundaries Clip page. I know on my iPad, it popped up and sent me a notification stating that there was a video um, that was in process or ready to, to pop up for 1 o'clock. So um, I might have notifications turned off on here because of doing the video. Oh, there it is right there. So this is a live review of the Live View Solo, and it shows you today. So if you're going to do the reminder, I just have notifications turned off in Mac OS. That's, that's why I didn't get it. But at least you could kind of see. Now, this is public right here. You can see it's public. People are able to see this. Um, and you can, you know, get it. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete it because I don't want my followers. You know, I've got almost, you know, 3,000 people here, 3,000 likes that are probably going to be like, oh, what, what, what? So um, you guys can actually see that um that is that is ready to go so let's take you back to the camera and show you what the camera is showing at this current moment so let's take you there now okay we're back at the camera here and as you can see it says facebook bonding it's no longer saying deer processing um we can see that um, everything is on the screen here it's ready to go it says it's ready so all i would literally have to do is just hit the hit the play slash power button here so as you can see the it, it resembles it and we'd be broadcasting on facebook live which i don't want to do because i don't want all these people coming in and trying to watch what it is but that's how simple it is to set this up so um i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope you enjoyed this review i highly recommend it go over to liveview.tv and check them out they have an awesome selection of products that'll fit your need not just the solo but other products and I'm sure, I'm 100% sure, you will be thrilled with their products. So I hope you enjoyed this unboxing slash review. And I hope you check out LiveU.TV. So a lot of you have asked over the over the years and, and wanted to know how I do my remote broadcast. And that's courtesy of the folks over at LiveU. Check them out, LiveU.TV. And pick yourself up a LiveU solo. This thing is great. Um, I hope you enjoyed the mini review slash unboxing of this product and um, I hope you guys go check it out and I think you'll enjoy it. Until next time, keep it buzzing. Hey, hello everyone, it's Don Bain, The Gadget Professor, coming to you live and in color from our Scottsdale, Arizona studio. Today, we are going to take a look at an incredible device. As everyone knows, I do a, a lot of live interviews all over the country, and uh, my show's been going for, I think, almost seven years now, and it's heard in 172 countries around the world. Uh, the Gadget Professor show just took off like a shotgun, and don't ask me why, but it did. So people always say, you know, what equipment do you use? How do you, how do you get the high-quality video? Well, the truth of the matter is uh, I've just uh, recently started using this uh, LiveView solo device, and it's, it's, it's quite a unique device. Uh, LiveView is pretty much, in my opinion, is the uh, innovators and the inventors of this bonding technology. So this device is a portal device that will allow you to do high-quality HD streaming pretty much on the fly, wherever you want to go. So if I'm at CES or NAB, uh, I actually take this device, and I'll show you. It comes with a nice little pack, so the clip is right here. It clips right on my belt, and uh, it comes with the charging device. Everybody's familiar with these power packs. In any event, this will give you a two-hour charge, and away you go. So you can connect any type of camera, high-quality camera. It can be your GoPro. It can be your DSLR. It could be your movie camera. And you just have to have an HDMI output which is already attached to this, and we'll get into that in a minute or two. Or you can go SDI if you want to go the pro way, and you're totally portable for two hours, and this will stream directly to Facebook if that's what you want to do with the click of a button. So it's quite unique device, no question about it. They are known for their bonding technology, and essentially what that means is they're going to take the signal, and by the way, this connects up in several different ways. You can connect this to the Internet, your hardwire Ethernet cable right to this device. This will also work on Wi-Fi, but really where the technology is and the secret of this device is this will take two, two cards from any carrier that you want, AT&T, Verizon, uh, Mobile One, 
I don't care who your carrier is, but you get these portable cards, these USB uh, cards, and what you're going to do is you're going to put one on one side, and you're going to put one on the other side, and kind of that's what it looks like. Don't worry about how these things hang because they're going to go in this nice case, but uh, I typically use two different carriers. I'll use Verizon and AT&T. You can adjust to what you want, and yes, you can use two of the same cards, but the beauty of what LiveView does is they'll take a combination of cards, if you will, of these USB cards, and they will create this bonding technology and they will know automatically and mathematically they will figure out how to get you the absolute best signal. It's in a combination of how these cards are actually picking up the signal and the antenna technology that's built into this. So what's going to happen is from this device your camera will be attached to it you will actually be able to stream live directly to Facebook or for that matter any major CDN that's out there so you can pretty much go to any CDN that you want instantaneously and in a second or two I'll show you what that live view interface looks like on the computer and also I'm going to tell you that uh, in addition to the crazy features that this has uh, it actually has a screen here where you can actually monitor the video signal so it really is an all built in one portable box and very affordable as a matter of fact I think this runs about 1800 bucks you are not going to find a higher quality, more reliable device than this Live View Solo. Let's take a look at how we turn this device on. It's actually pretty simple. You can see here is screen and uh, this is actually loading right now. I just turned it on and you turn it on right here. It's real simple. You push the button and it turns on. This device here is a little uh, switch, if you will. It's a rocker switch. And what this is going to do is allow you to click through the various menus. When you find what it is that you're looking for, you're going to push that in. And it works very simple, very easy, and uh, it's just a, a no-brainer, quite frankly. Let's take a look at how you get the camera inputs connected to the device. On this side, you'll see that we have a large protrusion here. What is that? That is for your SDI camera. So if you're using a professional camera, you're going to use this SDI jack. Not to say that you can't use an HDMI camera, which I think most people would probably have. And uh, that input is right here. So you can connect either the HDMI output from your device, your camera, or you can use the SDI. They are both located here. This is a real handy feature here. This is where you're going to put your headset, or if you want to use earbuds, go right ahead. That's a jack dedicated to hearing your output of your audio when you are recording. Uh, I get a lot of questions as to what this micro uh, SD card is and the truth of the matter is at this point in time this is not uh, connected so uh, don't worry about it because uh, it's not up yet but I think that's coming very soon. Let's flip the device around to the other side and uh, see what we have there but before we do uh, I need to call your attention to this very important feature here. This is where you're going to connect whatever carrier's card you're using. You're going to connect that very easily into there and now you have one side we have another side to go we are actually have your carrier's card hooked into the USB side let's turn this around right here and uh, this is the only other side that we need to talk about uh, you're gonna hook your DC power to charge the device up and uh, it comes with its own uh, charger of course and uh, you'll plug that right in there and charge the device up make sure it's charged before you hit the road you're gonna get about two hours and then of course right here you have the other card that's going to go in so we'll plug that there like so and now we have uh, two cards if you will and uh, the other thing is if you really want I'll plug, unplug this for a second if you really want to use your hardwire ethernet cable you would use this connector right here and uh, this will actually take a hardwire so again you have three ways of connecting uh, to the internet here you have the hardwire ethernet cable uh, if you go on the front of the device uh, you'll be able to configure this via the menu to your Wi-Fi and of course last but not least uh, you're gonna have your two uh, carrier cards right here that will allow you to connect to the internet so there's three different ways uh, the cards the ethernet cable or Wi-Fi uh, not much missing, to be honest with you, not much missing at all.
So let's take a look at what this puppy looks like all put together. Here is the device put in the case. Obviously, you're going to clip this to your belt or your strap pack, whatever you want, and uh, that will take care of that. The unit is turned on. There's your screen. And this is a nice shot here, if you will, of the, uh, the two cards that we're using. They fit very nicely in these little pockets here with elastics on them. And uh, obviously, the uh, devices are connected. So this is it. This is the total package uh, that will get you streaming uh, for two hours. Uh, all portable and highly, highly, highly reliable. So let's zero in on the applications for this wonderful Live View Solo device. As I mentioned early on, you can use it for any type of sporting event because it's totally portable. You can use it for interviews. You can use it for a house of warships. It's great for that. So what I use this for is a variety of different applications, but as you know, I do professional broadcasting. So I do a lot of off-site or portable location types of events. So if I'm doing a man on the street or a man at CES or a man at NAB, I need someone to have a camera and the portability of streaming, which this will do. What happens in my situation is I have a cameraman with this uh, pack and the signal of this is actually sent back to my TriCaster or my LiveView, any type of switching device, this actually becomes another signal. And that's very important because it's going to give you high quality HD professional broadcast stream which comes in as another channel, another camera on any type of uh, professional streaming device, any type of professional switcher that I'm using and that's one of the things I love about this. Alright, so here's where the pedal hits the metal. What's the special sauce that's going on in this LiveView Solo device? And I'll tell you exactly what it is. It's called Reliable Transport. LiveView Solo incorporates what's called LRTTM. What's that mean? It's LiveView Reliable Transport. This is a unique transmission protocol that they pretty much engineered and invented. And what that does is it guarantees you consistent, high-quality, live video stream over the Internet. And that's what they're known for, and that's really the special sauce behind this device, and no one else has that. So by using LiveView Solo, you're taking advantage of their high quality engineering and their technology which is going to take all these packets, make sure that the signal is strong, make sure that the signal has no lag whatsoever and it's going to transmit it to the live view, what I'll call relay station and boom it's going to go out from there. So that's why you want to go with this device, quality and reliability. What we're looking at right now is the actual dashboard, the login screen for your live view account. Obviously, when you sign up with LiveView, you're going to get your own account, your username and password. So I've put that in, and this is where it brings me. This is my unit name. If I click on that, it's going to show me that I'm connected. And uh, right now, my provider is uh, Facebook. That's where I'm going to go. And uh, we'll just hit the back button here, and we'll take a further look. So uh, right now, the unit's connected. Uh, my provider, obviously, is Facebook. And really, all I have to do at this point in time is just click this device here to start the unit and I will be streaming instantaneously it's that simple if you do not want to go to Facebook uh, yes you can go pretty much wherever you want and this is the interface you can go to Facebook uh, Periscope and Twitter Switchboard Live, Wowza you can go directly to YouTube if you want, Ustream, Daycast, Limelight, uh, Akamai obviously there's a, a lot of choices here and uh, at the end of the day if you want to use RTMP uh, that's available too, so you're going to click on that, and then you can customize it to whatever CDN you want to use, and that is a key feature right there. The ability for this to use anybody's streaming service is huge, and that's why I really like the LiveView products. So the unit costs $14.99. That's it. Then you're going to spend 45 bucks a month for the solo cloud service, which is phenomenal. Or if you want to save a couple bucks, I would just do it by the year. It's 450 bucks for the year. Great deal. If you're lucky enough to live here in Arizona, you can buy the unit from Multimedia Communications. The information is right here below me. And they are a great company. If you have any questions about the Solo or any LiveU product, you can call Multimedia Communications and they will do their best to help you. You know, you can go to GoSolo.tv and find a reseller in your area. Well, that's going to wrap it up today, folks. I hope you enjoyed the review of the LiveU Solo. I love that unit. And uh, thank you for tuning in. This is Don Bain, The Gadget Professor.
Hello everyone, this is David A. Cox with Tech Talk America, and today it is my pleasure to release our new to Mac class free for all of you out there to enjoy. Now, for those of you who didn't know, this class was originally a premium class. We charged $10 for it, and people could download it to their computers. Well, it's been out for about 10 months now, and as of the date that we're recording this segment, uh, Apple is about to release their new operating system. So I thought this is a great point to show our fans how much we love them and give them this class free to enjoy. Now, because the class is two hours long, I would encourage you, if you feel like your brain has just hit that point where it cannot absorb anymore, feel free to hit the pause button and come back and join us another time. Also, to help you retain as much information as possible, we have created a handy PDF guide that you can download. You'll find a link to that in the description of this video. Also, for those of you out there who do not speak English as your first language, or those of you, frankly, out there who just prefer to have subtitles, I am going to have this entire class subtitled. So uh, please understand, it takes me a week to be able to do that. So if you happen to be one of the people who catches this class right after it comes out, just wait a week and it should be there for you. The way that you enable it is you're gonna click on a button at the bottom part of this video that says CC, it's the closed captioning button, and then from there you can select your language preferences and turn it on or off. Finally, I wanna say that um, because this class that you're about to see was recorded 10 months ago, there are a couple of product recommendations that I had recommended then that I don't so much recommend anymore. That's the real reason why you wanna get the PDF guide because the PDF guide has the accurate information. And on that topic, I just wanna say in general, if any of you out there need help with getting the right electronics, because when you go to a big box store, you don't know how much training that person actually has. You can always go to our website and you will find my little list of recommendations. Just go to techtalkamerica.com and then when you get there, click on the little tab that says product recommendations. Finally, before we go, I just wanna say that we really do value your feedback. So please, if you don't mind, take a moment when this class is over and leave us a comment in the section below. Hit the like button. Uh, the other thing you can do if you want is you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and that way you can find out when we do come out with new classes. I believe we have actually just uh, crossed 500 videos. Now, some of those videos have been taken offline over the years because they were just outdated but 500 pieces of content is a lot of content to produce. So thank you all uh, who have been our loyal fans over the years. Here it is without any further ado, new to Mac, coming up next on techtalkamerica.com. All right, folks, so the first part that we're gonna be going through today is I wanna show you how to set up your preferences for Finder. Finder is uh, sort of the equivalent to what was like my computer back in the Windows days, uh, at least back in like the Windows XP days. Um, I don't, I have to admit, I don't really have much need for PCs anymore. I've found the light and hopefully a few of you have as well. And you may feel that by the end of this class. Um, so let's go through it. All right, so Finder is where all of your stuff lives. It's the most important place. You're going to hear me reference it a million times today, so you do need to know this. Now, here's the thing. Finder is this little happy Mac dude here at the bottom left corner of my screen. However, it does say, if you look here at the top left, Finder. It always says at the top left the name of the application that you are currently in at that moment. The fact that it says Finder just means that I'm clicked here on the desktop. The desktop is the main screen when you boot up your computer. Hopefully you know that. So don't think that when I say go to Finder, I don't mean this, okay? Finder is down here at the bottom left. So what we're gonna do is to make sure that we're all on the same page, I wanna get us all in the same settings. So let's go here to where it says Finder at the top left. Now one of the things you're gonna find about the Mac is that they put a lot of thought into everything. And the, the great part about this is usually you never even notice this, but every application works similarly as far as how you go to alter it, all that good stuff. Windows, not so much. So we're gonna go into Finder and we're gonna go to Preferences. With pretty much every app on the Mac, the Preferences is always right here. When you're in the app, it will say the name of it at the top left. When you click on it, Preferences is right there. So let's go into that real quick. Now we have these four little uh, tabs that you see here at the top left corner of my screen. We have General, Tags, Sidebar, and Advanced. One of the parts that I always usually go through um, explaining about how these classes work is I very specifically skip over things. Uh, it is a deliberate process done on my part to make sure that your brain 
can absorb as much as it can possibly absorb. Because let's face it, by the end of two hours, that alone, you're going to probably you know, feel a little bit mind blown. So we're going to go over the most important stuff. I am skipping over stuff, but it's stuff that I don't feel is really important for everyone out there to know. We're going over the important stuff. So general, okay? This is basically what I tend to recommend. So you'll notice I have unchecked hard disk. Uh, that is, by the way, if I check it, if you see here at the top right, it now says Macintosh HD. By just clicking that, it's hiding it. It's not really important to have it right there. Then we have external disks, CDs, DVDs, and iPods and connected servers all checked. Most of those you will probably not need, except for maybe external disks, but I think it's safe to have them there just in case you ever do need them if they're turned on. Next one we have here is New Finder Window Shows. Now by default, that is set to all my files. Funny thing about that. Um, did you ever notice that when your computer is set to show all files, it's always that one you just don't want first. I think you all know what I'm talking about, Mr. I have my documents folder called Texas 2008. Mm -mm. Anyways, I wouldn't do that because inevitably it's that one thing you don't really want to show up on your computer. I work with a few people. I know what people have on their computers. So new finder window opens. I would recommend either downloads. You could do the documents folder, desktop, whatever you want, but I would change it away from all my files. I'm just saying. Next one we're going here to is sidebar. And for this, I would just like to ask you to uh, mirror what I've got going on here. So you can see here, once again, we have unchecked, for some strange reason, all my files. We're going to keep AirDrop. We're going to keep applications, downloads. Uh, we're going to keep the uh, home folder. Now, the home folder, you'll see, is that little icon that you see there with the house. It's not going to say Tech Talk America on yours. That is where your stuff lives, and so it should have your name on it. Just check that. The next three we can check, which is iCloud Drive, Desktop, and Documents. We can skip the next three, skip the next one after that, and we're going to check hard disks and external disks. One of those things where, once again, you may not always need it, but it's there if you ever do. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh, check CDs, DVDs, and iPods or recent tags. Finally, we're going to go here under Advanced. This is what I would tend to recommend to everyone. Show warning uh, before changing an extension. We're going to check show warning before emptying the trash. Check remove items from the trash after 30 days, and we're going to check keep folders on top when sorting by name. Also, you'll notice there when it says uh, when performing a search, hit search this Mac. That's, I believe, the default on everyone's computers anyway. So now that we've got that all set, now we're ready to actually talk about what is Finder. So let's go into it. Once again, happy little Mac icon here at the bottom left. So when I click on that, that gives me access to all of my stuff. So for example, if I go here under applications, this would be every single application. Some of you have called this programs, especially if you're coming over from the Windows world. On the Mac, we call it applications or apps as a shortcut, abbreviation rather. So you can see some of my apps here. You will not have the same app, so don't worry if yours does not look the same. And uh, below it, you'll see we have, for example, desktop. We have downloads, okay? All these things that we had just told in Finder Preferences that we want to be there. Next thing we're going to talk about here is uh, we're going to talk about the viewing options uh, for any given window that you have open. So let's go, for example, to applications. So you'll notice that when I'm clicked here on this option here, there are these nice big icons. It's really easy for me to go through and find what I want. But then when I go to something like my downloads, it's this view here. How do you set those? Well, the way you're going to set them is it's based on where you are at the time. So if I want to change the way my applications folder works, I'm going to go here into applications. And right here at the top, sort of, sort of towards the center, we have these four options here. Now, this first one right here is what you see. This is the icon view. So they're nice, these big icons. Little trick for you, by the way, if you ever want to make those icons larger or smaller, if you look down here at the bottom right corner, we have a little slide bar. So if I slide it to the left, they're really teeny tiny. If I move them to the right, they get to be a little chunkier, chunky icons. Next one we have here is a list view. A list view I tend to find is uh, really nice for sometimes the documents folder. Um, there's a couple other options that might be better, but that is one option there. The next one we have here is columns view. This one, uh, for those of you who have a lot of folders, and then you have files in those folders, and other folders, and there's all sorts of folders on top of folders, this is the best view because you can very easily navigate through this. So if I click, for example, on this folder, it shows me what's in that folder. Very easy. The next one we have here, though, is cover flow. 
And uh, cover flow is this right here. So it's sort of a split between two. So you have a, a, a line that's right here in the middle. You have, and then as you click on the different items, it's going to give you like a little preview of what it is. At this point, I would like to give you a little quick tip. If you ever want to very quickly open pretty much any file, uh, for example, a song, a video, a photo, uh, document, whatever, anything, if you just click on it once, so like for example, this photo right here, see how it's highlighted? If I just simply tap the space bar, that is called quick preview mode. So it'll very quickly give you a way to just sort through files and you can, if, let's say you have three different versions of a document, you can very quickly figure out which one is which without having to actually open it. So that's that little trick there. Uh, next thing I want to do is talk a little bit about this. Let's go back and let me just set this up correctly. I'm going to talk about this little puppy down here. This at the bottom of your screen, that is called the dock. And the dock contains uh, icons. Those are apps that you have a quick shortcut to. And you can completely customize your dock however you like it. And one, one thing you should know is that you can add or remove items. So let's go over how to do that. So let's say, you know what, I don't really do a lot of uh, spreadsheet documents, so I'm gonna remove numbers. That's this little app right here, it comes with the Mac. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag it off the screen. I'm clicking and dragging, and it's gone. Now one thing I always like to go over is how to get it back, because one of the questions I tend to get a lot from folks that I'm working with who are very new to this stuff is they think that they, they accidentally remove an icon from the dock. They think that they've deleted it. They haven't, they just have removed the shortcut. I'm gonna show you how to get it back. All we have to do is go to where that application lives and drag it and drop it back. Very, very simple. So where does everything live? It lives in Finder. So let's go back to Finder, go back to Applications. And now what did we remove? Numbers? Here's another little trick. If you uh, are in, you know, let's say applications like this and you want to just very quickly get to the correct letter, just hit that letter on the keyboard. So I'm gonna hit N and it jumps down to notes and right next to notes we have numbers. So now I'm gonna drag and drop that back down here into the dock and it stays there. You'll also notice that if I click and drag it to a different part, I can get it to stick there. So you can move your icons around however you like. So that is a little bit about the dock. Another thing I want to show you is how to increase or decrease the size of the dock. Some people like larger icons, some people like smaller icons. So let's go over how to do that. If you look here on the right, okay, um, bottom right, you'll see there's this really thin, it might be a little hard to see, this thin black vertical line. And if you put your cursor on it, it turns into those two little arrows. And at this point, if I drag down, you'll see the icons get smaller, the whole dock shrinks. If I pull up, it gets larger. That's the largest that I can go with how many icons that I have. If I removed a few icons, it would be a little bit bigger. So that is that. Next thing we're gonna talk about is um, something that you'll see actually right here. So if you look here at the right-hand side of the doc, now not all of you are gonna have this, but these are actually shortcuts to my documents and downloads folder. That is what we refer to as a stack. And it's just a different way to get to the same place. So if I go to my documents folder a lot, this might be a good idea. It saves the step from having to go to Finder and then click on Documents. So if I click on this, you can see it kind of fans up like that. The way you make that happen in the first place, let me just recreate it for you. We're gonna go once again to where it lives and we're gonna drag it and drop it. Now, because the documents in the downloads folder actually live in that home folder. Remember that house icon that we set up in Finder Preferences? Well, now we're gonna actually need to go there. So we're gonna go here into the home folder. Yours won't look necessarily exactly like that. And what we're gonna do is take the downloads folder. Is that the one that we removed? Or we do, nope, we removed documents, sorry. And my documents are in iCloud Drive. So let's take that there, documents, and we're gonna just drag it and drop it right back down into the dock. So drag and drop, very simple concept. So you can add or remove any items to your doc, whether they're folders in the form of a stack or applications for the left-hand side. The next part we're gonna talk about are these little dots that you see here at the top left of my screen, these little red, yellow, and green dots. Now, you're gonna see those with pretty much every application, pretty much every window on the Mac, and I wanna go over what they mean. So the red one is a little bit confusing because it used to be very consistent and now it's not always the case. So the red dot is actually close. So you'll notice if I close this Safari window, 
Notice it still says Safari at the top left corner. Because Safari is still running, we have only closed the window, not quit the application. So I want to be clear, there is a difference between closing and quitting. So if I want to open another Safari window, I could basically go here to File, I can go to New Window, and it will open a new Safari window. So that red dot usually means close. There is an exception to the rule, which is page, I'm sorry, photos. There are a few other applications as well, but photos is the big one. If you hit the red dot in photos, it is actually quit. That's important for you all to know because if you're doing anything with like syncing photos from your camera, okay, you don't want to close because you're going to end up quitting in the case of photos. So just minimize, which is the next one. So this little amber yellow dot, that is minimize. So when we click on it, it's going to kind of genie down there into your dock so that if you want to bring it back, you just click down here. Notice it's now here at the bottom right next to the trash can. We're going to click on that, and it comes right back, just like that. The green dot here is to go into full screen mode, but it is also a second thing as well. So if I click on this, you'll see everything else kind of melts away. The only thing we have here is now Safari. I'd like to also tell you at this point how to get out of this if you need to, so that you're not you know, panicking. So the way to get out of full screen mode, there can be two different ways. I'm going to teach you both of them because they don't always work. One doesn't always work. So the easy way is to simply tap the escape key on your keyboard, which in this case will work. Okay, so you can see it kind of moves back down to the normal size. The other way that does work all the time is if you just simply put your cursor at the top, top of the screen, very, very top. You'll see the top menu bar comes down, and now we can click the green dot again, and the same thing happens. So that's what those little dots do. Now you know how just a moment ago I told you that the green dot also does the second thing? I'd like to show you what that does now too. Now this is uh, only in the more recent operating systems for the Mac. But if, so right now, I have open two different applications. I have Reminders and I have my Calendar, which are two apps that I would be very likely running at the same time and maybe need to move things from one to the other. So what I can do is to really maximize my usage of my screen. What I can do is I can press and hold on that green dot and now you'll see that it kind of lights up a side of the screen. If I drag to the right, it, drags, it highlights the right. If I drag it to the left, it just highlights the left. So what it's basically telling me is I'm going to run this in half screen mode. Okay, So I'm going to let go, and now it's clinging to the left-hand side of the screen. Now I can choose a different app to run on the right-hand side. So now I'm going to click here on Reminders. So right now they're running 50-50. Now if I want to adjust it so that maybe I have a little bit more space with the calendar and less with um, the Reminders app, what I can do is I can grab that black vertical bar and we're going to drag it to the right. Now this isn't going to work for every single app out there, but for most of them it will and you can kind of resize it however much you want um, to a certain extent. It's going to snap back and forth, but that's how you do that, which is a great feature that Apple in absolutely no way totally ripped off from Microsoft. Yeah, they stole that one. All right, so let's get out of that. Let's quit, quit. Okay, let's move on to the next thing we have here, uh, which is trash. So trash, you will see, is the last icon always on your dock here at the bottom right. If you click on it, uh, the way you empty it is, you'll notice here it's grayed out right now because I have nothing there, but if I put my cursor right here, you'll see there is an empty uh, button right there. So you click that, you empty the trash, it's gone. I would also at this point like to give you a very useful hotkey. What is a hotkey? A hotkey is basically a combination of keys that you're going to press on your keyboard that's going to do something. For example, copy and paste is a very well-known hotkey. Um, a lot of the different ones that they have on a Windows computer are very, very similar on a Mac. For example, copy on a PC is Control C, paste is Control V. Well, on a Mac, it's the exact same thing, except it's never the Control key, it's always Command. So Command C is copy, Command V is paste. Now, to help you remember the most important hotkeys, not all of them, just the important ones, we have included a one-page PDF guide in that uh, PDF for all of you. That's going to be an example of a page that you might want to consider printing out. So here I've created, very quickly, a folder on my desktop. I'd like to give you the hotkey to very quickly delete a file or a folder. If you are clicked on it, you'll notice how it's highlighted right here. Command, delete. Boom. Sends it straight to the trash. Very 
useful trick when you're doing a little digital spring cleaning, which we're going to talk a little bit about today. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to spend a little bit of time here on system preferences. Now this is going to be a bit of a big section because once again, I feel like it's important for a lot of you to know several of these, so let's go into it. So the the way you get into system preferences is by clicking on this Apple icon that you see here at the top left corner. We're going to be talking more about the Apple menu in a little bit, but for now we're going to focus on the second item down, which is system preferences. So in system preferences, we're going to go through these and I'm just going to give you what I tend to recommend to a lot of people. First one is here under general, okay? And the only thing I would really recommend that you consider checking out here um, are this item right here, which is show scroll bars. The default is set to automatically based on mouse or trackpad. Some people like that. I do personally like that. Some people, however, prefer always. What this basically means is if I go on a website, like let's say Tech Talk America, you'll notice there is no scroll bar, okay? The reason why is that now the Mac is using